didn't quite know uh, what Tristan was thinking of saying uh, happy cat today for this Saturday morning. And yes, good morning to you. My name is Stefan Tabul. On camera, we have Xander for a change today. And yes, we are sitting with some lions in the grass. Now, you can just see the back of a lioness over there. There's a whole bunch of lions there, actually. This is the Angama pride, the pride of lion that live at the base of the Olololo escarpment. Just be and there's a tail of a cub. At the base of the Olololo escarpment, just underneath the Angama Mara camp. You can see those little cubs. There we go. Awesome. It's tackling mom. Of course, mom being the object of a lot of games with uh, young lions, they practice their stalking and their pouncing and their tripping all on the very, very patient mothers. And it seems like a lot of lion there in actual fact, not just one or two. I can see a tired mom there. She looks like she's got a full belly. Difficult to say if they ate last night. The wind was blowing a bit last night. It was very difficult for us to hear what was going on. But she's got that heavy bellied swing. A contented lion. The grass is very tall this time of the year, and you can see it's starting to change color. Although there's no winter here as there is in Juma, where Tristan is at the moment, where you'll notice all those very dark grays. Ah, there we go, and disappeared. <laughs> Gone. The grass here has just changed from a green color to this golden brown color, and very suited to lions at this particular point. The grass is nice and high, and the same color as what their skins are, or their fur is. Let's have a look at that. A dark green tree line right there in the center of your screen. That is the Mara River and the riverine forest around the Mara River. And we're on the floodplains adjacent to the river. And this is dominated by this tall grass. Mostly in this particular area, grass called red grass, Thamida. And then a few tree species, a few hardy tree species. You're looking at a Balanites thicket. Now, Tristan can possibly show you another type of Balanites that we get at Juma. That is the, uh, bal that's the torchwood. This Balanites here is a different type of, or is a different species. I forget now the actual genus. I think it's... Ooh, I wouldn't have a clue, actually. I'd have to go and look it up. But it is definitely a Balanites. And that at least we share in common. I'm told that uh, Tingana walked across the dam wall last night at Juma, across the Juma dam wall. I hope that you get to see him today. It would be nice to hear from the ladies and Tristan on that side what he's looking like and how robust he is. Of course, I haven't seen a leopard since I left Juma. It's very difficult to find out here in the Mara, as you can imagine with these grasslands that don't suit leopard very well, mainly just hyena, cheetah, and lion. Now, Emma Ruth, you wanted to know how high the grass is. Emma Ruth, uh, this Demeter grows to about, uh, let's say, four foot. Uh, I could go standing in that grass and it would be just underneath my armpit, basically, and I'm a six foot tall. See, there's... Sander doing a lovely shot of the actual grass stem. So that's about four foot. If you had to walk through this grassland, the grass would be probably between belly button and armpit height. Come on, cubs. Come on to the termite mound and come and show us what you're doing. They're having a good game there and very difficult to see actually in this grass. But they're on the shady part or the sunny part of that termite mound. You can just see a lion cleaning itself in the grass there. These lions loving this particular area and the reason for that is that they've got cubs in the area and these cubs are young and uh, they're not moving a lot and lioness will tend to stay in around about the same area when they've got cubs. And that's because the cubs don't move very far, they're still not strong enough to move very far. And although you can't say exactly where these lions are going to be, Another lion is walking off there. There's a fair amount of certainty that they come back to roughly the same area. For the couple of weeks, that cubs are very small. So you're looking at about 8 weeks to about 12 weeks. And then the lioness will start to walk off and cover more of their territory.
Lael, you want to know if lions get fur balls like house cats do because you saw one coughing the other day and uh, this obviously this this lion licking itself. Lael, yeah, absolutely, they get fur balls. The biggest fur ball I've ever seen a lion hack up was about the diameter of an American football and bigger and about a softball size. So, let me see, that lioness's ears now, they were about, it was, a, if you could turn that into a sphere, that is how big the fur ball is that I've seen a lion hack out, made up of very densely compressed fur. Of course, lions, very similar to house caps, cats, do battle with fur balls and they can actually be detrimental to them uh, long-term health. The only animals out here that can really deal well with fur are owls and hyena, funnily enough. Oh, that is such a beautiful shot. Lioness in the grass. Let's see where she's going. I've got a feeling that they're lying up in the grass. There's now the third lion that we've seen, plus some cubs, walk off in that direction. And when she goes flat, I'll move the car a little bit and see if we can get a better view. Now just behind the tree, of course. The sounds this morning are fantastic. There's still a breeze blowing. Not a very strong breeze, but it's bringing us some sounds of elephant on the river that are screaming at something. It's also bringing up some sounds of hyena. These lions are dead quiet. I think let's go forward a little bit and see if we can't get a better view of these lions from a little bit further forward. All of a sudden got a hay fever attack from something. Sky, good morning to you. Um, you'd like to know how long it'll take the grass to get short when the wildebeest arrive. Not very long at all. It'll take about three months and then all this grass will be nice and flat and like golf coursey, like this big. Not all the grass, the wildebeest don't eat every single species of grass. They're quite selective feeders and they'll just take the best grasses, of course. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what impact they have. Everyone says that it goes flat over here and you can't see, uh, you can see as far as, well, as far as the grassland stretch. But that is yet to be seen for me in any case. All right, we've got two lions, one standing up down there and another one quite close to us over here in the same place. Not quite sure what they're doing. Looks like they may be hunting this morning. That one there looking off wistfully into the distance. Make a quick scan of my, of the surroundings wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's see what is around the wild. The zebra and the giraffe and the impala have not come down off the slopes yet from last night. I expect that at a point they would. And this lion could be listening to almost anything, really. Looking back at her pride mates. There's a lion lying up in the grass, much closer to where we are. I think that this lion will probably start to feel lonely in a bit, get up and move. I mean, we should have some pretty nice lion shots of these trees in the background. James, you wanted to know if there's ever been a year where the migration did not arrive and how detrimental to the ecosystem that would be. James, um, I don't know of a specific event of when the, when the, when the, the wildebeest arrived, of a specific year. I do know that it, or excuse me, didn't arrive. I do know that it has happened before. So there are years where there is a lot of rainfall in the Serengeti and the grass stays healthy uh, and doesn't disappear. And... Uh, those years, the wildebeest numbers are not as huge as they are if the, if the Serengeti dries up. Um, how detrimental would it be? I don't think it would be detrimental at all. Obviously, there'd be less churning up of the, of the soil. 
there'd be less dung deposited on these on these flats on these alluvial flats but of course there'd be less compression and compaction um I don't think it'll have an effect at all, to be honest. Not here in the Mara Triangle, at least, anyway. There's enough animals over here that the lion prides and the cheetah and the hyena have got an abundance of food as is. Not an overabundance like the, the, the migration brings, but definitely an abundance of food. And they wouldn't go hungry. Um, at a baseline plant level, I can't think of anything... I can't think of anything out of the out of the the, the, the the norm, perhaps with the exception of there being not that massive load of dung deposited on these grasslands. Mm, good question there, James. I don't think it'll have an effect at all, personally. Uh, has it happened before? Yes, absolutely. Will it happen again? Most definitely. It's not going to happen this year, though. The Serengeti started to dry up lots of weeks ago. And as far as I understand it now, it's just a series of dusty plains with very, very little there. And that is because Kenya's in the, well, Kenya and northern Tanzania is in the throes of a fairly large drought at the moment and one that is set to continue into this year and next. Right, the sun here has been up for a good hour already. And it hasn't at Juma. And so off you go to go and have a look at Tristan and what is apt to be a fantastic sunrise.